but you will be treated with a profound lack of compassion. The lack of compassion in your external environment is supposed to drive you within where you will hopefully over time develop self-compassion. And then having done that, later in life, take the compassion that you have gifted to yourself and turn it outward in service to others. That in broad strokes is a very common type of mm. rebirth. Plan. So would you say that there aren't really sort of evil people? There are, uh, you know, in the, on oh, the other wow. side, so to speak, it's not like they're good guys and bad guys. There are souls all striving to evolve and, you know, wanting to Hmm. Time develop self-compassion, and then having done that, later in life, take the compassion that you have gifted to yourself and turn it outward in service to others. That, in broad strokes, is a very common type of mm. rebirth. So, would you say that there aren't really sort of evil people? There are, uh, you know, in the on the other side, so to speak. It's not like they're good guys and bad guys. They're our souls all striving to evolve and you know wanting to work out their karma and so on and they they take on roles when they come to earth which may appear evil or good or whatever but before coming to earth there isn't that polarity between good and evil is that true well I about how sick and twisted this really is people think about the pedos and these fucking pieces of garbage where they're just one of us and they started doing this to learn lessons there's no bad and good no there's no wrong decision there's no wrong thing to do everything is actually great and if it's bad it's a lesson it's it's something to learn we chose it wait a minute Now, if I'm on a hunch here about this parasitic system running the astral plane and I've siphoning off our energy, how would they keep the game going, people? How would it operate at its core to keep this looping going to feed off of our energy? Exactly what these guys are teaching. This thing is so smart, you know what I mean? This thing knows how to keep the thing going. So of course the best way to keep it going is that we need this. We chose it. We're all in this together. It's genius, right? And so beware of the ones preaching this. And I see right through them. So this guy on the screen, he's telling me that the pedophiles that's out there aren't aren't bad at all they're okay they're perfectly fine it's one of us and when it does these things it's actually our teacher people imagine that person think deeper imagine that person in his family let's say his sister little daughter or son goes through that and he's thinking like oh well he chose that spiritually he's growing there's nothing wrong with it because he chose it who cares Doesn't that sound sick and twisted to you guys? Really think about it. Welcome to planet Earth, people. We're knee deep in this, people. What it is you want to learn. So if you're trying to deepen in compassion, a common way to go about doing that would be to choose to incarnate into a nuclear family in which you will be treated with a profound lack of compassion. The lack of compassion in your external environment is supposed to drive you within where you shout out to Laura and Divine and Clump. Rory, uh, Butterstuffs, everyone much love. You will hopefully over time develop self-compassion and then having done that later in life take the compassion that you have gifted to yourself and turn it outward in service to others 
that in broad strokes is a very common type of mm. plant. so would you say that there aren't really sort of evil people there are uh, you know in the on the other side so to speak it's not like they're good guys and bad guys there are souls all striving to evolve and you know wanting to work out their karma and so on and they they take on roles when they come to earth which may appear evil or good or whatever but before coming to earth there isn't that polarity between good and evil is that true well, I, uh, I should say here, in the second book, Your Soul's Gift, uh, I talk extensively with Jesus through one of the channels with whom I collaborate on that book. And I ask him about evil in one of the channeling sessions. And I say to him, I don't believe that there is anything uh, as evil. There's just people, souls who are in pain, and the expressions of the pain are what we call evil. And he says, yes, that's essentially correct. Uh, Okay, people. Let's look at the definition of evil real quick. Before we talk about evil. Profoundly immoral or wicked. And wicked. Wicked, bad, wrong, wrongful, immoral, sinful. Profoundly immoral and wicked. Okay, so what they're saying, let's rewind this part here. Did he just say that the reaction, he just said the reaction to the pain is evil. So the pedo that did that pedo act isn't evil. The painful reaction to the pedo is the evil thing. Did you just say that? Let's. I talk extensively with Jesus through one of the channels with whom I collaborate on that book. And I ask him about evil in one of the channeling sessions. And I say to him, I don't believe that there is anything uh, as evil. There's just people, souls who are in pain, and the expressions of the pain are what we call evil. And he says, yes, that's essentially correct. Uh, pain expressed is what you as a society refer to as evil. So the people who are acting in evil or negative ways, uh, they fall into one of, I talk extensively with Jesus through one of the channels with whom I collaborate on that book. I and I ask that. him about evil in one of the channeling sessions. And I say to him, I don't believe that there is anything uh, as evil. There's just people, souls who are in pain. And the expressions of the pain are what we call evil. And he said. Wow. Where, where's everybody at, people? Where are the true truth seekers at discovering this, the core of this system, the nuts and bolts of this matrix, people? These truthers out here, these channels, people, most of them are complete trash. They aren't true seekers, people. They're boring pieces of garbage that aren't getting to the true truth of this realm. I'm going to call them all out. They're nonsense pieces of garbage, people. That's how I feel. If you're a true seeker and you don't go here with the parasites and the nuts and bolts of this matrix, you're not a true seeker. You're a boring piece of garbage. A lot of them are a waste of space. Sorry. It's time to call it out. It's time to get serious with this and call a spade a spade. Let's let's break this down, people. Again, this is my first time watching this. I found this last night before I went to bed.
so in my understanding real quick is that he's saying people they want you to think this again in the spirit realms there's good evil it's a big spectrum you wouldn't use these words to describe it there's just things with certain intentions where something where it doesn't want the best for you or it does you know what i mean wants a parasite off your energy or uses its own you see what i'm saying people this high mind system they kind of like are more like parasitic consciousness that needs you know what i mean some deep with it but now they're saying that the pain caused by these evil wicked people or consciousness or beings the pain we express is the evil thing not the act so the ex the reaction to the pain is the problem not the one causing it so we should be a ragdoll to the matrix and we should just take all this stuff why don't you people this is gonna get crazy watch this wow time develop self-compassion and then having done that later in life take the compassion that you have gifted to yourself and turn it outward in service to others that in broad strokes is a very common type of mm. so would you say that there aren't really sort of evil people there are uh, you know in the on the other side so to speak it's not like they're good guys and bad guys there are souls all striving to evolve and you know wanting to work out their karma and so on and they they take on shout out to ryan watson thanks for coming in and miss pink shout out to you wow one of the first subscribers on the old channel from 2020 great to see you hope you guys are well um this is madness people like i said this is gonna get deep evil people there are uh, you know in the on the other side so to speak it's not like they're good guys and bad guys there are souls all striving to evolve and you know wanting to work out their karma and so on and they they take on roles when they come to earth which may appear evil or good or whatever wow this is crazy dude evil people there are uh, you know in the on the other okay hold on into a nuclear family in which you will be treated with a profound lack of compassion. The lack of compassion in your external environment is supposed to drive you within where you will hopefully over time develop self-compassion and then having done that later in life take the compassion that you have gifted to yourself and turn it outward in service to others. That in broad strokes is a very common type of mm. So would you say that there aren't really sort of evil people there are uh, you know in the on the other side so to speak it's not like they're good guys and bad guys there are souls all striving to evolve and you know wanting to work out their karma and so on and they they take on roles when they come to earth which may appear evil or good or whatever but before coming to earth there isn't that polarity between good and evil is that true well, I, uh, I should say here, in the second book, Your Soul's Gift, uh, I talk extensively with Jesus through one of the channels with whom I collaborate on that book. And I ask him about evil in one of the channeling sessions. And I say to him, I don't believe that there is anything uh, as evil. There's just people, souls who are in pain, and the expressions of the pain are what we call evil. And he says, yes, that's essentially correct. Uh, Pain expressed is what you as a society refer to as evil. So the people who are acting in evil or negative ways, uh, they fall into one of two broad categories. Sometimes they are on the other side, very light-filled, evolved souls who are agreeing at your request or someone's request to play a quote-unquote negative role so that you can grow and learn what you want to learn. The other broad category of people who are playing negative roles are less evolved souls who are 
carrying back into body some kind of unhealed pain, which it's often foreseen is going to lead them to act in evil or negative ways. Uh, but the tension there generally is Wow. He channeled Jesus, people. And said that the evil acts aren't evil. The reaction of the evil is... Then we should call, call our local police department and their pedo, um, you know, section. And they have their different, you know... Um, they're compartmentalized for different crimes and say, hey, can you guys shut down your pedo department? Don't study them anymore. Don't don't arrest the pedos because they we chose to be victims of pedos. All the kids are choosing it if it happens. So just let it go. Because if we react to it, if the kid reacts to it in pain, that's the evil act. That is so sick and twisted, people. Do we see... And think about this, people. In the entire world, right now, we are the only ones examining and understanding this right here, really. Honestly. Point out to me somebody talking about this right now. Isn't that weird? Dude, this is fucking insane. Breast is what you as a society refer to as evil. So the people who are acting in evil or negative ways, uh, they fall into one of two broad categories. Sometimes they are on the other side, very light-filled, evolved souls who are agreeing at your request or someone's request to play a quote-unquote negative role so that you can grow and learn what you want to learn. The other broad category of people who are playing negative roles are less evolved souls who are carrying back into body some kind of unhealed pain, which it's often foreseen is going to lead them to act in evil or negative ways. Uh, but the tension there generally is that they're bringing the unhealed pain back into body with the hope of healing it not with the intention of expressing it. Now, they know in advance that very often they may not be able to heal it, that it may get expressed, and this is all understood in the pre-birth planning, and the other souls with whom they're incarnating agree to that possibility. They say something like, we hope that you will be able to heal this as yet unhealed pain, but if you are not successful in that attempt, and you act in ways that are negative toward me, oh. I'm willing to take that chance because I will work with that. I will use that to foster my own growth while I'm in body with you on planet Earth. Hmm. Okay. Wow. This is in insane. He'll be here any day, but never now. You know what I mean? That's the typical ascended being superheroes. Any day your superhero's coming, but it'll never be now. I mean, come on, people. Let's drop it. Take your power back, you know? Back and forth, the people, the souls, it's energy. So you're subscribing to this? To be honest, anybody that subscribes to this is a piece of shit. That's all I gotta say. I don't know who, whatever, that's like, there's no wrong or right thing to do. Everything just happens and, and whatever, and it's okay, and we're doing this to learn. No, people. It's a very sick, twisted, and demented way of thinking. This is a program. They want us to think like this. You see all this going on right now is to really program us people on a level we cannot fully understand that's so deep people to be victims of the system you know and like it 
and think that we need it. You chose it. You need it. Shut the fuck up. You get abused as a child. That person wasn't evil. You're evil for reacting to it. That's what they're saying now. See, it gets worse. You see how it's what I'm getting into is getting worse now? More sick, twisted, and demented. We're not all from the same creator. We're not all one people, okay? We need to have this understanding. So especially the ones teaching this, like on the screen, this is one of them. This is like their little representatives to continue to program us. These are the programs in our reality. So they're, they're, they can't be one of us teaching us this and trying to pass this message on what he's saying. This is one of them. We're not one with them, people. So we got to see the difference. Because if you're... If you resonate with their message, then you're one of them too. You're not one of me. You're a sick, twisted, and demented person. And as far as I'm concerned, you are supporting the parasites. You know what I mean? So you might be one of them. I'm not. I'm standing my ground. I'm calling it out. This is sick and twisted. It doesn't get more sick and twisted than this. People are like, ah, it's just a push and pull thing. Just take it. You know what I mean? And then you'll, you know what I mean? No. Whatever. You know what I mean? Just get over it. Just get over it. Okay. Advanced that very often they may not be able to heal it, but it may get expressed. And this is all understood in the pre-birth planning. And the other souls with whom they're incarnating agree to that possibility. They say something like, we hope that you will be able to heal this as yet unhealed pain. But if you are not successful in that attempt and you act in ways that are negative toward me. So the little, um, I think she was an eight-year-old girl when I was growing up, when I was like 10 or what was it? She was younger than that. And what happened to her by her own family and brothers and friends and stuff, the horrible things that happened to her, she chose it. She chose that. And they were doing the right thing. People, some of the people that I knew growing up and what they went through, knew what they went through and stuff, things that they told me. And people want to say, it's just a push and pull thing. She had things to learn. People, I swear to God, anyone that thinks that is an absolute piece of garbage. I will not accept that. It's not the truth. You want to look at these things like it's just like, whatever, who cares? There's no good or bad. There's no wrong or right thing to do. Just, just observe and just whatever. You know what I mean? She had things to learn, right? She needed to learn compassion and forgiveness. Those evil men were her teacher, her soul group. She needed that spiritually. We're in some a serious system, people that is operating fully functional and we're in this and it's not home okay it's here to feed off of our energy and make us think we need this and we chose it and the acts the evil acts done to us to parasite off our energy isn't the problem you reacting to it is the problem how dare you react take it motherfucker take it and so these predators pick up that mentality too like you know what? This this little child needs this. I need to teach it a lesson. This is a part of its timeline. I'm just doing what I what I agreed to. That's all it is. That's not bad. Hey, we have an agreement, right? I'm your teacher.
that is so sick and twisted people oh my god wow Uh, they fall into one of two broad categories. Sometimes they are, on the other side, very light-filled, evolved souls who are agreeing at your request or someone's request to play a quote-unquote negative role so that you can grow and learn what you want to learn. The other broad category of people who are playing negative roles are less evolved souls who are carrying back into body some kind of unhealed pain which it's often foreseen is going to lead them to act in evil or negative ways. Uh, but the tension there generally is that they're bringing the unhealed pain back into body with the hope of healing it, not with the intention of expressing it. Now, they know in advance... That so why do they need to heal the pain when they chose the pain in the last life? They agreed to the pain. They needed the pain. So now that pain carries on, they need to... I thought they were learning from the pain and it was there to for them to learn now they carry on that pain to heal the pain wouldn't it be like once you're done with the life you're like i went through that pain to learn this so lesson learned now next lesson you see how they make no sense people very often they may not be able to heal it but it may get expressed and this is all understood in the pre-birth planning. And the other souls with whom they're incarnating agree to that possibility. They say something like, we hope that you will be able to heal this as yet unhealed pain. But if you are not successful in that attempt and you act in ways that are negative toward me, I'm willing to take that chance because I will work with that. I will use that to foster my own growth while I'm in body with you on planet Earth. Okay. Um I don't know if you're Jewish. You have a Jewish last name. Um, have you ever... Okay. I am Jewish. What about the Holocaust? I mean, was, was Hitler basically a, a noble soul who agreed to this odious role on Earth and in collaboration with six million Jews? <laughs> this is like the extreme example uh, or acid test of, of your whole theory. I mean, how, what's your commentary on that? So I have to preface my response by saying, if you read channeled literature about Hitler, it is contradictory. I'm going to share with you uh, what I was told by a source that I trust and respect. I asked about Hitler very on when I was starting the research for my first book. And what I was told was that, <clears throat> believe it or not, he uh, planned before he was born to be a great spiritual leader. And his soul equipped him with certain gifts that were intended to facilitate that. So gifts of oratory and rhetoric, gifts of charisma. Uh, as I understand it, there was a specific option in his pre-birth blueprint for him to use his artwork to spiritually inspire people. You might know he liked to paint and was apparently pretty good at it. So this was the intention, the plan that Hitler carried into body. Now we all have free will. He used his free will to respond to painful things that happened in his childhood to go in the exact opposite direction of where his soul wanted him to go. Uh, you can always do that. Everyone has free will and you can deviate from your pre-birth plan as much as you want anytime you want to. So he took those gifts that were intended to help him be a great spiritual leader and went 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Now, the other question that is often asked about Hitler is, well, what happened to him? Where is he now? My understanding is oh, that he is back on the other side, uh, is aware of the pain that he inflicted on so many people, and as a form of self-punishment, is apparently perpetually recreating his own physical death, which apparently was com very painful. Now, it's important to understand here He's not being punished by God or some being or counsel external to him. He is punishing himself in this way. But he's loved unconditionally by God, just as all of us are. He's surrounded in the non-physical realm by guides and angels who are beaming light to him. He just can't perceive it yet. Eventually, he will see that light. He will move into it. He'll stop punishing himself in this way. And then presumably at that point, he'll realize he's got a lot of karma to balance and we'll start coming back into body. Interesting. So, uh, you said something like he's con he's repeatedly 
inflicting the experience of his death on himself as a form of punishment. Um, of course, there are a lot of people in this world who have done horrible things, none so notorious as Hitler, but you know, millions of them. Uh, this would imply that there is some sort of hell realm in which people relive or experience the consequences of their actions on earth and in other words suffer uh in order to somehow it doesn't out make karma. sense i thought you did nothing wrong i thought we chose it why is now there there's this hell where they're reliving what they did as a punishment or to understand it but i thought the pain is needed <laughs> you know what i mean it's very confusing it makes no sense people Well, that, that actually is consistent with what people who have had near-death experiences report. Uh, a number of them have gone to or uh, seen or made contact with a realm in which beings are uh, punishing themselves in different ways and inflicting pain and suffering on each other. But it's important to understand here that this hellish realm is not something that God or some great external spiritual power created as a means of punishing those who do quote unquote bad things. This is a realm that is self created by the beings who have chosen to make no sense people. Why are they being punished or even punishing themselves? They did the right thing. The people chose the pain. It's like they get tripped up on their own words every time. Like I said, people, the school narrative falls apart every time you think a little bit deeper and you break it down. And so now this guy's debunking himself. To put themselves there and their guides and angels come to that realm and encourage them to leave it and join them in the light. But because of the way they've treated others, they feel unworthy of moving into the light. And so they choose to stay in this realm. But they're not being forced to stay there. They can leave at any time mm. they choose to. They just don't feel worthy yet of leaving. Of course, all the world's spiritual traditions do speak of a realm, realm or realms like that. Uh, some, some traditions speak of multiple levels of hell and multiple levels of heaven and so on. Um, and uh, there was a story in the Ramayana where at the end... Um, uh, no, not the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, where, where at the end um, Arjuna, or maybe it was Yudhishthira, found himself uh, in heaven, but the, the bad guy was there, Duryodhana, and, they, and he said, well, what's he doing here, and where are my brothers? And, and, they, and they, the, the, whoever said, well, your brothers are in hell. And he said, well, I want to go and be where they are. I, I don't want to be here in this heaven if my brothers aren't here. So he went to hell. But then very soon the whole situation reversed, they went back to heaven, and Duryodhana was nowhere to be found. He had gone to hell. And, and, the, and the moral of the story was that he, Duryodhana had a little bit of heavenly karma to work off. Um, you know, Yudhishthira had a little bit of hellish karma to work off, and the other Pandavas. But once they had worked that off, then they went to where they actually belonged and stayed there for a long time. Yeah, n none of that is very surprising to me. And I, I think that, again, this is consistent with what people who have had near-death experiences report. Uh, but again, I want to emphasize that these are self-created punishments, a self-created realm. Uh, as I understand it, God is not punishing anyone for anything that they have done. And God loves all beings, including Hitler. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, are they any more self-created than the Earth is? seems to me the Earth is a self-created realm. I mean, it's a collaborative, it's a collaborative yes. situation. We're all creating it, but, um, you know, each of our individual contributions goes to comprise what we find on this planet. The Earth is, is very much a self-created realm, and in many respects, an artificial realm. Uh, and it's very different than our lives on the other side. But it's set up to foster, to maximize growth and learning and healing. There are very good reasons that it's like this, but it, it's a consensual reality. We all agree when we're in the non-physical and before we come into body, that we would like to participate together in this kind of realm uh, and that we're going to limit our perceptions to, for the most part, to information that comes in through the five senses. 
Uh, and because we all share those same five senses, we are perceiving the same reality. Mm. A question came in from Elizabeth in Colorado. She asks, uh, what is your definition of karma and what does it mean to live a karma-free life? My definition of karma is uh, unbalanced energy or a sense of incompletion around a particular experience. So let's take a simple example. Uh, let's say that two people have a past life together in which one was ill and the other person is that person's caregiver. When those two people transition back into spirit, they'll have their life review as we all do, and they may or may not have a sense of incompletion around the caregiving relationship. May is the key word there, and it's up to them to decide we're complete with that experience or we're not. Nobody external to them is saying you have karma here. Now, if they look at the caregiving relationship in the life review and decide we're complete with that kind of experience, then there is no karma. On the other hand, if they feel incomplete with it, the feeling of incompletion is the karma. So what would they do in that case? Well, the easiest thing to do, the most simple, most direct thing, would be to simply trade places. So now the one who it was ill... Okay, they have a bunch of stuff. Could have a bunch of chapters here. The next one is... The purpose of forgetting our pre-birth plan, past lives, group karma. Okay, yeah, that's what we want to get to. Trump. Yeah, we're probably going to listen to this whole thing, people. God. V being uh, empowered as a victim of parasites. This is wowzers. I just want to like circle back, people. He said, trying to wrap my mind around this. I'm not mistaken, right? He said, there's no evil. Evil is the reaction to the act is what's evil. So... To avoid evil and not be evil is that no matter what happens to us, we just don't react to any sort of pain caused by another being. All the way down to kids. So um, let's, let's put that into perspective real quick. So you're telling me if this guy has a daughter that came to him some horrible pain she went through by somebody, he would say, the person that did to you was right. They didn't do anything wrong. You reacting to it and being upset about it, you're evil now, child. Wow. So your child says, something evil happened to me, dad. Look what this person did to me. Like, nothing evil happened. Your reaction is evil. You're the evil one, ch child. Whoa. Something horrible happened, Dad. It was so evil. Look what this... Like, no, nothing evil happened until you told me what happened and you reacted to it. You're the evil one, kid. Wow. That's what he's saying, people. This is fucking... He plans the life challenge of caregiving, and the one who was the caregiver plans the life challenge of illness. By trading places like that and having the opposite experience... Their intention is that they will get to a... I mean, it's, as a predator or someone evil, it is... I mean, this is... They're giving somebody that is evil and is going to do something horrible the perfect mind state to pick up that, hey, we have a contract. They chose this. Besides, I'm not doing anything wrong. If they react, they're wrong. The reaction is wrong, not me. This kid needs a lesson. Bottom line, and I'm here to give it to him. Wow, these predators, people, whoa. They would love to pick up that mind state, and a lot of them have. The place of completion in regard to the caregiving relationship. And once they do eventually get to that place of completion, 
then there is no karma and they move on to do something else. Uh, in terms of what is a karma-free life, a karma-free life would imply that somebody uh, felt complete with every previous experience that they had. And there are such people who come into body. Uh, there's somebody in your soul's plan in the chapter about the pre-birth planning of drug abuse. It's the story of a soul who plans before coming into body to have a heroin addiction. And having put that plan in place for reasons of his own, he goes to another soul with whom he's had many past lives and uh, who he loves very much and who loves him very much. And he essentially says, would you agree to be the mother who shepherds me through this very difficult experience? Well, what we find out as we continue in that pre-birth planning session is that this soul has no karma. This soul is complete with all previous earth experiences. But out of her great love for this other soul, she chooses to come into body and serve as his mother while he goes through this very difficult heroin addiction. But she didn't have to do that. There was no karma. She felt complete with everything, with everything mm. she had done here. Previously. Yeah, in, okay. in the Vedic tradition, they have the, the concept of avatars who are sort of already, well, just sort of embody incarnations of God who have nothing to work out personally, but who just come here for the benefit of humanity. And I suppose the bodhisattvas in Buddhism are, are a similar concept. So it's not like they have individual karma to work out, they're just here to, to serve and give. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. I, I think Sai Baba, uh, when he was here, was a good example of that, as I understand it. He was an avatar who had no previous karma and was just here yeah, to serve. Yeah, there's also controversy but, around him. But. Here to serve. Yeah, these ascended beings, people, they're the ultimate programmers. You know what I mean? The ultimate. Just to be a rag doll to this world and these predators. You know? You need it. You're here to learn. Just wa sit back and watch the show. Enjoy it. We're all one. We're all in this together. You know, I think a true, I don't think there's any ascended beings that's really looking out for us people at all. None of them. Zero, even Jesus people. Maybe he was hijacked, they threw extras on it. I don't know, but I don't think so. I don't trust it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no. No. 